All right. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Good evening, Mr. John Williams. <laughs> How are you doing tonight? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. It's good to see you here. Good to see oh, you. Yes, good to be Dr. here. Good to be. Dr. Wade, welcome tonight. How are you doing tonight? Make sure everybody's not on. Hello. All right. All right. I'll go ahead and get us kicked off tonight. Well, we want to take take a moment and say welcome to everyone. Welcome to Black Love for Singles. Uh, we are hosted here every Thursday night at 7 o'clock p.m. And we want to welcome everyone in to join in with us as often as you can. Uh, tonight we have a, a special feature as always. Anytime we come in with any of our special guests, that's a special feature to us. And we love to have conversation in this room. Uh, we've got our guest, uh, Dr. Nisa Jenkins, that's going to be sharing uh, from the aspect of um, making peace with our past uh, today. So we're excited to hear that message. And we want you guys to feel free to chime in, whether you put your chats in the, uh, your comments in the chat box, or if you want to raise your hand, we're going to use some uh, time at the end of our uh, time tonight to welcome you guys to join in with us. Uh, joining me tonight is my co-host, co Dr. Marcus Wade, and we're going to be taking turns, kind of going in, having conversations with Dr. Jenkins. But before we do anything, can I see a lot of newbies in the room tonight. Can you guys put your name in and let us know where you're chiming in from? I know many of you may be from the uh, the Georgia area, maybe some of Dr. Uh, Dr. Jenkins' guests. If you'll let us know who you are and where you're chiming in, we'd love to welcome you in on tonight. Uh, for all of the uh, family that's already here, we want to say thank you guys for joining in. And uh, we pray that you guys will reach up, grab that link, share it with as many people as you can. Tell them to come on in the room because we got some great conversation moving forward. Uh, but before we move forward, we're going to go ahead and open up with a word of prayer. And then we're going to get moving tonight. Dr. Jenkins is on uh, not Central Eastern Standard Time, so it's already 8 o'clock her way. So we're going to definitely try not to hold her on the line too long, and uh, but uh, but still also uh, also have a great show tonight. But let's go ahead and go in for a word of prayer. And uh, I'm going to ask my brother Joe if he will come in with some nuggets before we get started. I'm going to I'm going to pray first, and if you can give us some nuggets that you always you always share some good good uh, gems, and uh, we'd love to hear some positivity tonight as everybody is settling in. Amen. All right. Well, Father, we first want to say thank you so much, Lord God, for blessing us to come back in the house once again. We thank you for this avenue called Black Love for Singles and Naomi's Love. It's where we get a moment to pause and take a breather and stop and think about life and do some self-care and some self-love. And uh, Father, we say thank you. Thank you for all the family that's joining in with us tonight, all of our guests that are joining in. We pray, Lord God, that this time that we'll have to, together will be uh, a holistic time to where we all can grow and we can learn from some things. I pray, Lord God, a special blessing over our guest speaker, Dr. Jenkins, on tonight. Lord God, I pray that you would uh, give her comfort, Lord God, give her peace tonight as she shares. Father, I pray that you would even allow this the time to be something that she needs also. You know, we just thank you for it all. Bless all of those that will be arriving in the room. All of those will go back and listen to the replay. I pray that the anointing of God will rest upon us all. We pray for those that are sick and shut in, Lord God, that may be going through some things today. We pray for all of those that, you know, just came through the, the Valentine's uh, Day of Celebration, that it may not have been so sunny for them. Uh, we pray, Lord God, that you will continue to keep doing a work on all of our hearts and help us to smile in the midst of it all. And uh, we just bless you tonight. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, Mr. Joe, I'm going to let you kind of share some nuggets with us tonight, and then we're going to get moving with our uh, message uh, with the show tonight. Oh, thank you so much. Glad to be here. Glad to see everybody in the room. So let's kind of throw some things and see where they land. <laughs> First, <laughs> I like the way you put that. <laughs> um, people stop hate, start hating you when they cannot control you. 
Say that again, Joe. <laughs> People start hating you when they cannot control you. Okay, that's a good one. Peace of mind is the only thing that I'm interested in now. Peace of mind. Mm. Yeah, we all want that in some form or fashion. The emerging from within you is an emergency. The emerging from within you is, is an, an emergency. Is an emergency. Got it. A couple more, then we'll get back to uh, the program at hand. Um, never stop learning because life never stop teaching. Good one. Good one. Thinking is difficult. That's why most people judge. Oh, I'm gonna have to put that one up. <laughs> <laughs> and one more, we'll call it. Do not get dramatic in the midst of drama. Do not get dramatic. Yeah. In, in the midst of drama. I like that. But well, we could definitely gonna hold on to them nuggets, Joe. And and you always give us food for thought. We listen, we can't just listen to it and just say, mm, I got it. Sometimes we gotta go back and hear it again and again and again. So wow. One day <laughs> you're gonna have to share with us where you're getting all them nuggets from, whether they I'll from within or where you getting them all from. <laughs> yeah. You know, we and, and I won't uh, make it long, but we have a whole lot of teachers around us you will look at youtube you got so many people there so the word is getting out even though the climate we in it seems like there's a falling away and that's so true too but there are teachers as well as platforms like we are on here yeah. that people are willing to share different books the whole thing so you hear it here and there and but we can get into that later about where i get some of the nuggets so thank you for the time you're welcome. You're welcome. Well, Mrs. Faith, another one of our co-hosts. Miss Faith, how are you doing tonight? We want to make sure to welcome all of our, our hosts first before we move forward. How are you doing tonight? I'm good. I am good. Doing well. I like your new do. You like my new do? Yeah. yeah. yeah I like it. Yes. It, it was time for something different. Okay. I get it. I get it. No, I've been enjoying this whole week. Um, I think all of our hosts have put, uh, we had a good meal this week. We put like, we and last week, but uh, we had a really good meal this week. So I really enjoyed the interaction, communication, what we've learned, what we've embraced um, mm -hmm. as individuals. And I know God is just doing his work inside of us. You know, yes. it all starts within. I love it. Uh, mm -hmm. While we're talking about that, I want to say thanks, um, uh, Mr. Joe and Ms. Faith, for our guest, Mr. Eric Shaw, that came in on last week uh, and shared some wonderful, wonderful nuggets. I think he talked about, was it deferment? Is that what it was? The deferred compensation. It? Deferred compensation. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that's a deep message also. But thank yeah, you guys yeah. so much for inviting them to come in with us. And uh, we look to host uh, many, many guests uh, coming in this year so that we can learn from one another. Uh, last, I, last, I got my brother, my co-host, Mr. Uh, Dr. Marcus Wade. Marcus, how are you doing tonight? Doing good. Long day. You know, we're trying to get settled in as well, but I'm <laughs> glad I'm here to kind of be a part of this opportunity to talk about this, this transition in life that we all <laughs> will face at some point if we're trying to, to grow and become a better person, most definitely. So looking forward to our, our guest tonight, Sharon, and mm -hmm. her passions and what got her to where she's at tonight. And that journey, what it took to get there, you know? Amen. Amen. I agree. Y'all, we're so proud to have our men in the room. This is a little something different uh, that we're doing this year. We're making sure that we get, you know, a composite of thoughts coming in from not only just our women, but our men as well. And we got some guys that are willing to open up and share from their heart and we would, we couldn't be so much, so much, you know, prouder than the ones that God has sent in. Uh, we're going to get, uh, get uh, kick started this this morning because I'm mean, this evening because we got a lot that we're going to share. We interviewed uh, Dr. Jenkins on uh, Tuesday night, and the conversation pieces that we're going to talk about um, 
it, it's a, it's a lot. So we're gonna try to um, uh, uh, kind of uh, bring it all into one particular space. And I know Dr. Jenkins will share uh, from her heart, but we're gonna talk about brighter days ahead. Uh, for those of you that are just joining in, we have a two part to this ministry. We have Black Love for Singles that are for individuals that are in that space to where you know they're still trying to you know get get life to make sense even in the single space that they're in and then we also join together Naomi's love for those that are looking to maybe marry one day we want to make sure to come in and you know hear some real life stories and get prepared properly so tonight's portion is the Naomi's love um, we're talking about life even after divorce and then maybe starting all over again. And Dr. Jake is going to talk about that um, brighter days ahead and also making peace with our past. Um, I don't know about y'all, but I think it I think it would, you know, be a wise thing for us to make sure that we settle in with the things that have already taken place, that we will learn from it, that we will gain nuggets so that we can be a better version of ourselves moving forward and especially for the people that we will bring into our lives. So we're excited to hear it. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and bring Dr. Jenkins in. Dr. Jenkins, if you're ready, we are ready for you. Mm -hmm. I am excited. There she is. <laughs> I miss you, girl. I miss you. This is one of the co-hosts that was joining us at the beginning of Black Love for Singles. And boy, did we have a time in this room. <laughs> yes, we did. Yes, we have talked about it. how's everything going in your area, Dr. Jenkins, tonight? Yeah, things are well. Things are well. Glad to be with you all tonight. Good to see Faith and uh, hey. Joe. Uh, it's been a long time. Chick is on here. I see some of our family. So it's good to, to see you all and be with you. I'm excited. I am super, super excited. I got a little bit of rest, so I'm good to go. <laughs> good, good. Yeah, I know it's hard sometimes during the week when we're trying to do those interviews and everybody is just dog tired in the evening time. But we thank you so much for joining in with us. Uh, well, uh, we want to, I'm going to go ahead and kick us off today, but all of our co-hosts will join in at whatever time that you guys feel that, you know what, I think I want to ask the question about that. I want to know a little bit about that, but we're going to start off first, just kind of talking about that journey of starting all over again, Dr. Jenkins. I know that um, you have your own very unique story, and uh, we're going to let you kind of start off by just telling us a little bit about yourself. Uh, where you are in this single phase of life, how you got there, and and then we'll kind of move from there. All right. All right. Well, hello, everybody. I'm so glad to be with you all. Again, I'm super, super excited to be here. Just feeling really blessed that uh, I'd be able to come into the room with you all. Um, so just a little bit about myself. I uh, am, uh, let's see, I'm I always have a hard time because I always want to know Isn't where I'm hard start. talking about yourself. Yeah, it is, <laughs> it really is. But uh, have, uh, I'm a mother of two. I think that's where I'll start. Uh, my, my oldest is my daughter, Kamara, who's deceased. And I have my son, Charlie, who is 27 and uh, who loves to travel the world and keeps uh, my sister and I on our knees for sure. Um, <laughs> I am a health information professional, been in education now for, wow, uh, man, 18 years in education and, and uh, over 30 years in, in uh, the health information management field. Um, definitely been uh, in ministry as long as I can remember. It's funny, those, those are hard to put the numbers with, but I've definitely been in ministry, whether it was, uh, doing my own ministry with I Am Beautiful too, or helping at, at the time my uh, husband uh, with his ministry in his church. Um, so just glad to be here and, and uh, glad to be walking in this journey. Can I say that, you know, sometimes when you start out, it's, it's a little rough, you know, you're not sure if it's the journey you want to be on. Um, and I, I've been asking God, I was like, Lord, what is the one thing that I kind of want to start off with and want to say to you all is to make sure you get you some support. Okay, so we'll talk about that as we roll roll through this, but I think that that's the most uh, important thing that has helped me along this journey, and it's been uh, support that's been handpicked by God, right? I didn't pick my support myself. He placed them in my life, um, and so I'm grateful for that, and um, so that that's just a few things I want to share as we get started. 
Mm -hmm. I love that. And I, I like that uh, you don't get a chance to, you know, pick the people yourself. Uh, I really believe that God has strategically, um, you know, what he said, the steps of a good man have already been ordered by mm -hmm. the Lord. And he strategically places people in at the right time, even if they're just there for a season, he brings them in at the right time, one, so that we can learn more about his love. We don't lose our mind and then we don't have to walk alone. I just, I love that part of it. Uh, well, Dr. Jenkins, we're going to start off with our first one. We're going to talk about uh, entering into a new season of singleness after 29 years. Yes. To me, 29 years are like a lifetime. <laughs> Listen, 29 years, you can raise children. You can go yes. to school. Y'all, listen, y'all done raised your parents. <laughs> you yeah. Y'all have, have started your careers together. Sounds like a lot of history is there. So let's talk about that. You know, um, I know that um, you have gone through uh, divorce mm -hmm. um, after 29 years of marriage. And let's talk about that new season. How, how does that feel to be just brand new <laughs> that's what i call it just brand new and, and let me say this so i was married 29 years we were together 32 so we we were together a long time right young when we got uh married at least uh he's was a little bit older than i um but uh wow this this journey has really been something you know and i i can't say that i i knew what to do every step of the way uh <laughs> certainly did not yeah. Um, but again, um, not being afraid to ask those questions to, to people, uh, that are in my circle and my support, you know, in terms of just trying to learn life and, um, learn the things that I need to be praying about and, and the places I, that I'm going and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's just been, it's been tough, but, but it's fair, you know, and I, I'm, I'm grateful to, um, walk the walk knowing Christ had I, had I not, I know that it would be a very different walk for me. Mm, that's good good and I know that um, making a decision like that to start all over again uh, can take us on a new journey all by itself as you're reasoning with yourself should I should I not you know children are involved what are the kids gonna think listen we going to church together what they gonna think about us at the church yes. we especially as a woman we think about a whole lot of things dr jenkins and yes. i think that sometimes it takes us into some quiet places and we don't always know what to do uh kind of take us into that journey for the, those that may be on the line uh, mm -hmm. that may be either in that place or contemplating that place or kind of stuck in that place. What was that that decision making time like for you when, you know, before um, you know, going there? I always say you gotta think about something before you do it. So what was that like for you? Can I just be honest with y'all? Y'all mind if I just just Go tell right you ahead. The truth? <laughs> <laughs> I had thought about it many, many times, many, many times, but <laughs> Um, in the thinking, the many times I, I would pray and ask God, Lord, work it out. If you work it out, I'll stay. If it, if it, and then it would just work out. And then you got another five, six years. You in there, another five, six months. You're in there, and it's, things are, are are seem to be moving forward. Um, and then it was uh, after trauma. You know, after after the trauma, you, I, I, I in my life, I just didn't feel like I really had anything else to give. I didn't know what else to do. I didn't know how to solve. And there was no um, talking going on. There was no communication at all. Um, so it, it, it made it very difficult when you live in a house uh, and you walk past the person and they act like they don't see you and all those things. Mm -hmm. And then you're still dealing with trauma at the same time. So I think that it just all kind of added up. And I, I, I'll tell you all that I, I'm one of those people as, as a uh, health information professional, most of my colleagues that I know are very, very organized people. Um, and so I um, already had legal insurance that I've been paying for. So it was nothing but to pick up the phone and say, hey, I need to see an attorney. And when I picked up the phone to say I needed to see an attorney and, and ask some questions, it was the attorney that I bought my home and purchased my home with and did the, the dealings with. So it was somebody that I knew. Um, and so, you know, just going through that process and just kind of talking through 
um, and just thinking about it. So I, you know, I was still thinking and praying. I, I don't want anybody to think that, you know, I, I didn't pray about it. I certainly yeah. talked to my, my confident, my sister about it. Um, and she was asking me, are you sure, you know, is it, can't, can you just hang on, you know, um, cause she, you know, she knows me, um, uh, intimately in those moments when, you know, it's a little tough and you just mad or whatever, but, uh, you know. <laughs> just, just trying to, uh, press and, and, and I did, I want to just share this with the lady. So I had a girlfriend who was close to me and still is, she's my prayer partner. So she said to me, she said, girl, what you going to do? You got this women's ministry and you got all these women and they're going to be looking at you and they're going to be saying what you doing. And she ain't married no more. And I look, you see this look on my face. I just told her, I said, girlfriend, I don't care what they say about me. I'm dying in the place that I'm in and I need to live. I need mm -hmm. to live. Mm -hmm. And so I, I made the decision to do so. Um, and it, it was difficult. But one of the other things that I did for the women who have children, um, I have adult children, but I, I talked my son through it. So I, you know, as I was going through the process and, and making the decision, um, he and I had a conversation because I did not want him to think, um, ill of his father. I didn't want him to misinterpret, you know, misunderstandings. I wanted him to really just understand the whole gamut of things in terms of divorce and the emotions that you go through and, and you know, not doing that apart from asking God, is this what I should do? Um, and so I tried to make sure that I explained things to him. And I, I said that to say, you know, whether they are adult children or children who are old enough to understand, I do think that they are old in explanation um, because mm -hmm. they need to understand what's happening. Yeah, yeah, and I agree. Them. I agree with you there, Dr. Jenkins. Sometimes, you know, when I look back over life, um, there are sometimes decisions that parents make that, and when there are children involved, they don't think that the children understand that, but the children understand more than we think they do, yes, you know, yes. and, and they see more than they than we think that they do as well. Yes. And I think sometimes they just want to be a part. Okay, we don't care about change. We just want to be a part of the change, you know, yes. talk to us about it. So, yeah, I agree with that. Yeah. Um, any of our host hosts have anything you guys like kind of sharing with that? Because I know all of us, well, uh, Faith, Mr. I don't think Mr. Joe has been married, but Mrs. Faith, um, Dr. Wade, we've kind of been in that phase before. So you guys have anything that you guys would like to kind of share on that? I, I appreciate the uh, transparency, um, Dr. Jenkins, Sarah. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> when you were speaking about your process of making that decision in, in terms of what to do, I've been right there where you were mm -hmm. and, you know, really going before the Lord. I was married 26 years. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a hard place. And you really, especially when you have a women's ministry, you have those who you influence. You want to make sure that your decision making, number one, is, you know, before God and God gives you that release. But you also have to think about yourself. <laughs> you yeah. know where yes. you were and I was at the point I felt like I was dying inside mm -hmm. and, and I I really identify with what you were saying so I, I do appreciate you being transparent to share that because not everyone understands how that feels and mm -hmm. I know how that feels Marilyn probably knows how how mm -hmm. that feels but after that cycle when you were referencing it's okay I've been there too you know mm -hmm. Okay, five years. Okay, God, I'm gonna try this. You know, this next cycle, and then you, know, you feel like you're on a roller coaster. You go yes. up, and down, up and down. But yeah. you know, you have to, you know, put like Marilyn said, let's put a pin in it right here, mm -hmm. and make and make this decision of how I'm going to lead the rest of my life. So yes, I yes. just want to share that. Yes, yeah. and, and the thing about it is, when we're making a decision like that, um, we we. We have so many people that's connected, you know, because you got your in-laws, you got the friends that you've made together, you've got acquaintances with the church, your church, it's, it's a lot of dynamics. And then we wonder sometimes why it's so hard and why it's so emotional. Uh, that's a lot to, to toss around in the mind, but I thank God for giving us peace in the midst of those storms. Uh, Dr. Wade, from a male perspective, you know, I know he's been through that also. 
Uh, what were your thoughts during times like that? I don't know. It's kind of isolated for me because I didn't want anyone to kind of know what I was going through. I was kind of different from her. I wanted, I didn't, I didn't care, but I didn't care what people thought about the divorce and me being able to, um, I guess, co-parent these children that were very small at the time. She said her son was a bit older. Mine was very much younger when my ex-wife and I split. And I did explain it to him. I gave him the information that I felt they could handle at their age. And I thought that it would help them to become more balanced with the transition going back and forth. Cause that was going to be the thing going back and forth. Nice here or nice there. And it was very cumbersome at the very beginning. Now it's more easy to manage because it's been some time that's passed and they're mm -hmm. used to it, but they still don't like house to house. Mm -hmm. so they couldn't, if they didn't have to have it, they probably would, Surrender and say, I just want to be in one place where everything is at, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, Wherever my toys are. <laughs> yeah, balancing time is is a job too, you know. How do you balance it? So most definitely, I can most definitely concur with where she's at and when it's time to uh, move forward. It, it strategically, it's time to move forward. Mm -hmm. uh, and the, the, the breaking apart is always hurtful, but the healing part is always joyful, you know. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> It's joyful on the other side. <laughs> yeah, once you get there, most definitely. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the things, and we're going to move to another topic, but one of the things, you know, I, I know for me, uh, Dr. Jenkins, did you ever in your mind visualize what that life would be without your hubby? What that I would be not. like? I did not. I'm going to tell y'all, I don't think I was as prepared. And it's so funny. I, I have to say this just in reference to my, my sister, y'all, because I am always asking her different things or calling her on the phone and she's single. So she, and she's been single, all, all, always has mm -hmm. been. So she is like the go-to, like, okay, she, she would tell me, make sure you get you somebody who's going to uh, be a handy person who can come in and do I had the man. Yeah. They can <laughs> right. put on the house because you know uh there's he's not here to do them anymore. And then the thing about it is still to this day, I still will will drive around and not have gas because he gassed my car up all the time. And so I sometimes will forget, oh, I need to get gas. So all the little things, you know, it's like uh, Natalie Cole used to say, it's even uh Cheryl Lowe here, she'll know it's those small things, you know. Those little small things that he used to do around the house, like taking out the trash. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We miss that stuff when they go. <laughs> wait a minute, Lord. We didn't think about that. Who's going to take this trash out there? Who gonna, uh, 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 Regina said, who's going to mow that lawn? <laughs> Yeah, Nelly, go at it all. Who's going to get me a drink of water? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> So um, yeah, you, you know, you just you just never are prepared, and uh, there are lo those things that you uh, realize that you you needed a little help to do, and and it seemed like it just came so easy. Um, so yeah, that definitely has been a transition for me, but um, and, and learning, and again, you know, I just asked my sister, you know, what should I do about this? So oh, I think the air conditioner sounded a little funny, you know, <laughs> so. Just little things like that that's really been helpful. And that's, you know, why I, I, I prefaced my conversation with, you know, making sure you get you some good support, somebody who, who loves you, who cares about you, who's yeah. not going to talk about you, who's not going to make you feel that's like right. you're small because you don't know things. You can be as educated as you want to be, but you still are going to have some things you do not that's know. Right. Um, so, you know, I just think that that's important to have somebody I can pick up the phone and just call and just, you know, say, pray for me. I'm, I'm, I'm really not doing too well today. Um, and be like Faith said, being transparent about it. So that's just important to me at this, this age. And I never really realized how important it was to have some support, um, in your life that you can trust. Mm -hmm. You know what, Dr. Jenkins, and y'all feel free to jump in. That kind of takes me to the emotional side of that. Um, you know, because you, if you've never, if you've never dealt with anxiety before, mm -hmm. um, that that's a whole new ball game over there. And the anxiety could be a lot of the things that you just mentioned, you know, who's going to gas up the car. Oh, I don't even have no gas in the car today. I got to be at work at this time. And it mm -hmm. can bring on, uh, some emotions maybe that have never been tapped into before. 
And and the longer that that emotion, those emotions stay around, it can do a number mm -hmm. on you. You know, if you don't mm -hmm. deal with it, it can literally do a number on you. And then you're wondering why you can't get up out the bed, you know, why you can't, you know, get, you know, do the simple things that you used to do, like one, two, three at work. Now I can't even remember yeah. how to get to work. It's a lot of different stages that you go through, you know, so I know we're going to talk about brighter days ahead, but we need to gut this thing out. You know, yeah. there's, you know, uh, uh, another thing I, I heard one uh, um, a lady, she's going through a divorce right now. Uh, she uh, equate, equated it with uh, trauma. She mm -hmm. said it felt like trauma. You know, um, not knowing what the next steps were. Are we going to stay together? All that kind of stuff. And, you know, your heart goes out to people when they're, you know, really going through. So I agree with you. The support systems, are, it's important to have the right support system yes. around you, not yeah. people that's going that's to, key. yeah, ask you all these, you know, silly questions, you know, girl, what happened? All that kind of, this ain't the time for that, <laughs> you know? Mm -hmm. Uh, let's let's kind of talk about that before we jump out of it and kind of go into you know maybe the making peace with the past let's gut this out and then we can move further with maybe a, a clear mind I want to say this before we go further um every now and then I get stuck on these these tv shows mm -hmm. uh when I need some downtime or when I need to really really process some things and I stumbled up on one the other night called the Doracos. I don't know if y'all heard of them or not. It's it's a family on own. It's like a it's like a reality show, but but it's a true family. This lady had fourteen children. Fourteen. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it is a show worth seeing. She started off with two single children. She and her husband wanted to have that third child. The third one turned out to be triplets. The next set of children turned out to be quadruplets, five. The next set of children turned out to be triplets again. They yeah. lost one of the children. And then the last set of children turned out to be triplets again. So anyway, as the story is going on, I'm trying to like, how y'all doing that, you know? So anyway, I got a chance and finally the husband began to break because it's only so much emotionally that you can try to bottle up like that. And you could see it on his face. He didn't want to connect. He started disconnecting. He started doing all of that. And then one day his mother, we're talking about support systems, his mm -hmm. mother came in and she said, son, talk to me. And the moment he laid his head on her shoulder, he began to cry and just break down. So there is a moment to where we have to go through that. And I think after she talked to him, because one of the babies had gotten put in the hospital, once she got through talking to him, it was almost like he turned into a totally different person. Sometimes you just need that somebody that can help yeah. you kind of make that thing make sense. Mom, I understand that I'm supposed to be be a man. I understand I'm supposed to have all these things together, but what happens when I don't have it together? Yeah. Yeah. You know, and yeah. I can say that many of us, and, and Dr. Wade, you may be able to jump in on the clinical side to that, you know, that that that's kind of a dangerous place to, to, to be in, to not know that you need mental care. Yes. Because you've gone through so much. Dr. Yeah. Wade, you want to kind of jump in on that a little? I think people want to run on uh, their own ability sometime. I think it's, it's difficult to ask for help when you don't want to know, let people know where you're at. And I think that's one thing to keep people in that mental drainage and they're unable to get recharged. You could be at the best church in the world, the best family mm -hmm. in the world, but if you don't, if you think that some people think you should have a error-free life, you're not going to let anyone know that you're going through until you think you've come through or they see you at your breaking point. Then you want to talk about it versus if we nip it in the bud and we talk about it as, as we're going through it, it won't be as strenuous. Right. Right. We might still have some depression and some uh, regrets and some anxieties about the transition period, but it won't be distress. Mm -hmm. That's a whole different mindset. You know, so most definitely I, I see that. I saw it in myself. 
until I allowed myself to what attach to other men who were able to what pull me through to where I needed to be at versus me waddling in something trying to figure it out. Then I want I wanted you to always see me on top, not in the middle, and very most definitely not on the bottom, but just yeah. on top. I always doing well. I don't ever I don't think we've ever probably I guess we do think we I think we think we see people like that, especially if you see people who think they are beyond messing up doing something. We mm-hmm. we don't want people to see that we are fallible creatures, <laughs> yeah. you know, but we're also reboundable creatures, too. Right. We can rebound. Yeah. 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 We need to hear that. <laughs> you will rebound. You will grant, gain some, you know, yeah. yardage after a while. Maybe not right now, but after a while. Dr. Jenkins, do you have any thoughts toward that at all? Yeah, I, I wanted to just say, you know, for those uh, who are out there, I, the times that I was glad you brought up anxiety, first of all, because um, I never really experienced anxiety like I, I did following uh, the loss of a child and then uh, divorce. Um, but I, I my, my doctor had given me Xanax. And so, you know, it's like I had to call my sister. She a pharmacist. Let me ask her what's going on with this. And so, you know, uh, just, just being OK with taking that as needed um, for me. Um, really did help me um, as I, I went through the process. So I say to those who, who you know, just are not too sure about, you know, being medicated, if, if that's, you know, a necessity, as well as going to counseling. I, I, and I went to multiple yeah. counselors. I had to find the one who was the right counselor for me. Um, yeah. When I did find the right setting for me, um, that really helped. In fact, I, I think that they were doing like, uh, 12 week sessions or eight week sessions, I went through twice <laughs> um, yeah. because I, I felt like that was a place for me. It was biblically biblically based. Um, so I could go to the word uh, following our sessions. And um, so that was very, very helpful for me. So I just say to, to, to folks who are a little hesitant about getting um, help um, when you're going through these types of things like divorce, like um, grieving, it's, it's a good thing to see a counselor to talk it out um, as uh, Dr. Wade mentioned. Yeah. Uh, Miss Faith, uh, Dr. Mr. Joe, y'all have anything? We're we're doing this together tonight, y'all. <laughs> I, I think I might have uh, come out on a little better if I had gone through counseling. Me which too, Faith. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I didn't go through therapy, you know, because it was a lot of trauma involved mm-hmm. in it, and sometimes you don't recognize what trauma is until after you've gone through it and you've got some education, some some information, and you say, oh, wow, yeah, I was in a trauma situation. Mm-hmm. Um, but, you know, you have the support, like what Dr. Jenkins was saying, if you have that support system, that's good. But I think also if we don't share with those that whom we trust, then you you know you might have support that you don't know you have because yes, right. I didn't share mm-hmm. my situation with my parent with my mother. I didn't let her know because I didn't want to be a burden. Yeah, and have to you know share all what I was going through in my life and put that on her, and um, that could have been because of shame. Yeah. <laughs> you know, just the shame of not, you know, failing. You feel like you're failed, you know, failed your marriage or or your piece of the pie. So it's a lot of things in that. But I do um believe that hey, therapy is one of the or the best, along with God, the best thing you can do in order to go through your healing process. Amen. I agree with you, Faith. Uh, yeah, we we you know in, in this life, uh, we talk about the 29 years of being together with somebody. You have to unfold those 29 years because sometimes we took some pain in yes. and we took some things that, you know, I don't want to look at that anymore. And the 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 thing about that is when we when we <laughs> tuck things in like that and you try to move on with life. And you run into a new relationship, you don't know how to deal with it if it comes back up again, because we never exercise, we never unfolded that. And yeah. what happens now when somebody raised their voice at you are, uh, I think Dr. Jenkins, you mentioned even walking through the house, not speaking to someone, you know, will that be a deal break? I'm gone <laughs> because trauma is still there. Yeah. And I think that when I look back in hindsight, 
I think sometimes um, one of the reasons maybe that I have not remarried again was because there was still some unanswered questions that were there, uh, some unfolding and sometimes behaviors that I may have seen that I did not learn how to deal with in previous times. They showed their head back up again, you know, and it's like, mm -mm, I'm out of here. That smell like the past. I do not want to. <laughs> Dr. Jenkins, um, uh, have you have you thought about that? We, we're talking identity now. Mm -hmm. um, have you thought about or did you know, I, I know you've been going through some processes, talking to some people, all of that. Was there ever a point in your life where your identity was questioned as to am I good enough? you know um you know scars that i have you know will i be able to talk to any about anything anybody anything about this to anybody did your identity ever come into question with yourself certainly you know you 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 struggle with you know who am i now um because i really thought i i, I was in that for the long haul honestly um so you know i and i and i, I you know as i mentioned you know the passing of my daughter, it all happened around the same time. So I was trying to find out who I was without her, right? Um, yeah. So um, that was difficult. And then just getting to know myself. And, and, and as women, we all know when we, we have children, we put everything we have into our children. Not to say men don't, um, but mm -hmm. especially when you're raising a woman child, you are um, putting everything. I was trying to make sure I was showing Cam now a woman can do this, a woman can do that. Or, you know, so everything I was doing, it always had her, I had her in mind. Um, mm -hmm. So I had to find out who I was. I, of course, struggled big time now that I didn't have her. Who was I showing anything to? You know, I, there certainly there were other women and I knew that, but that my heart, she was my heart. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, that was a very challenging. And then, you know, you, you divorce and, and you say to yourself, wait a minute now, what, what? And then you, you're you not too sure what the dynamics of it is. I won't go into too much of that, but I do want to say you you start to question, well, you know, maybe I wouldn't, you know, didn't look right. <laughs> maybe I, I like clothes too much. <laughs> you start finding all kinds of stuff. Yeah, and it's funny because I'm on too many clothes. Yeah, our mind can go down a. a, a I said it to say because our mind can go down a rabbit hole. We can start thinking of everything that that we thought we did or didn't do, um, and and a lot of it I just had no clue. You know, when you've been with somebody for so long, you think you know them. You think you know what their their thoughts are about you, where they at, when they, and and you know, just things just started happening. And it just before I knew it, it was just for me it was over um so that was that was a that was tough and challenging just trying to find out you know it's okay to this is the thing is that there were a lot of restrictions right and mm. so then once the restrictions were no longer there and, and it's as simple as this is an example i'm gonna use for y'all because i think women who, who understand will understand this who are women who have some meat on their bones right yeah. Yep. So there's these black and white clothes, only black, white, gray at one time. And it's like, man, and, and, and the clothes didn't look so good. There was an era where the clothes just didn't look so good because she was a little bit heavier. You couldn't, you know, wear the things you wanted to wear. Um, and so, you know, then there's this transition that happens in your life and you realize there's some color out there. Look <laughs> <It's> some pink. <laughs> and the green. <laughs> And I just said, Lord, have mercy, there's some color. I'm not in the black, white, and the grays anymore. I can decide on some different colors now that those restrictions are no longer there and still be seen as a woman of God who, who, who just likes to put on something, who likes to feel good about herself. And I don't want to ever lose that again because I think I, I knew that once. But then once you 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 become, you you get restricted. That's why we have to use our voices we have to be able to speak up. We have to say, this is who I am. This is this is something that that makes me happy that I enjoy right. um, and not have to put it on a shelf and it gather all kinds of dust balls or bunnies on it. And now all of a sudden you can't even pull it down out the closet because it's so dusty, all the dust getting in your eyes. You're not in, and I said, I want to use that as an example because as that dust begins to fall, you can't see nothing. But what somebody else wanted you to be, you forget mm -hmm. all about those things that made you who you were and you know mm -hmm. that, those things go all the way back to to you know what your mom and dad what well, my mother was a was a dresser 
You know yeah. what I mean? So all of those things that you saw something beautiful, it it changed. And you don't even, sometimes y'all in your faith probably can relate to this. Sometimes mm -hmm. you know when the change occurred, it just happened. <laughs> and you yeah. look back and like, Lord, <laughs> have mercy, what happened to me? Yeah. But right. I think it's important for us to be able to use our voices to share who we are and be comfortable. And when somebody does not agree with that person, who you are, if there's not a place of compromise, perhaps we need to make the decision that that's not the person for us before we, um, you know, Mary, do yeah. our vows. Yeah. I have, I have a thought process as you're saying that though. You know, when do you get to a point when you're trying to move forward that you know that you've severed ties with past things that had probably been part of the reason that you haven't been going forward up to this point? Yeah. yeah, you know, Dr. Wade, as you say that, um, it's funny. Sometimes we think we're going forward and we're not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> you know, you think you're going forward because it, 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 you know, you're making those adjustments. You're, you're, um, if you will, compensating, and and you're really not moving forward because you. How can you when you're not really who you are? You know. That's right. Um, you might get a little, there's a little pushing going on. You know, I thank God for the Holy Spirit because I think he, he nudges us Ooh. and, and mm. the people around us that, that, you know, he will allow to say things to us and we'll, we'll look back and kind of glance at our, our past and say, well, mm -hmm. I did used to enjoy that. I did used to like to go to the movies. I don't, I don't really know what happened. Um, right. So I think a lot of times we think we're moving forward because yeah, I went to the movies last week, but I haven't gone in a very long time before that, you know what I mean? You don't, you, you're not doing the things that made you life enjoyable. Um, mm -hmm. So I think we, we, we have to really examine ourselves um, time and time again, just say, Hey, am I still enjoying life? Do I ask myself this all right. in my professional world? I was just sharing with one of my colleagues. I say to myself, do I still love what I do when I can no longer mm -hmm. answer that with a positive it's time for me to find something else to do professionally. I don't want to use that. Right, right. right. Um, but I think if it, if it is, if you're in a relationship or, or marriage and, and, and you ask yourself a question like that, you need to work at finding ways to revive, to rejuvenate um, your marriage and your, your relationship. And, and, and there are ways, there's counseling, there's, you know, talking, there's, you know, ministries, there's things you can do. So we, we can breathe life uh, into something. Um, yeah. We don't have to always give up or, or move on. Amen. That's most well, definitely true, though. Dr. Wade, I'm going to agree to ID the room, and then I'll let you take over from there. I want to welcome everybody in tonight, Black Love for Singles. We are talking about making peace with our past, and then we're going to move to some brighter days ahead, because we cannot stay in this space here. <laughs> we got to make sure we sweep all them cobwebs up as much as we can, put some linoleum on the floor, get some wax <laughs> down, and make it be refreshed, and move forward. So y'all are free to make sure to put comments in the chat box. We'll have a Q&A time in just a little while. Dr. Wade, you want to take over? So as you're going forward, you're, you're healing from the past, going forward to brighter days ahead. You have healed from all the records of things that created this drive in you actually to be self-accomplished and to get in the position that you are kind of in control of your destiny. How do you find yourself uh, reconnecting in your future with someone who's able to uh, be that partner you're looking for? And uh, what, what are you willing to sacrifice for that going forward? One thing I will say is, uh, and, and Marilyn, you, you talked about this uh, the other night, is not being afraid to ask questions. <laughs> Mm -hmm. I now I now call me, you know, you can pick up a title, right? Now I call myself the conversationalist, right? Because I'm asking all kinds of questions. I was talking to somebody the other day and I just started asking questions. You know, as they said one thing, I asked a question. I didn't, uh, in, a, in the past, I may not have been in a place where I could uh, ask those questions or even my mind wasn't moving like it should have in order to, to now, uh, let me let me find out a little bit more. Let me probe a little bit. I think that's that's important. Um, you know, as I'm as I'm looking to move forward, and I I don't know that I uh, I can't say that that I I have a, a, a definitive answer about um, 
building a new relationship or, or you know, I, I'm not saying that I'm against it. It's just, it, it's, it's very, it's, it's difficult out here. I don't know if you, anybody else feels that way, <laughs> but it's very difficult. She um, said out here. Like. Yeah. So, so, you know, I don't In know. In these single streets. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. But um, yeah, I, I, I hope to one day be able to come to a place where, where I hear God say that, yeah, this is a person for you. And I, 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 I mean, I am willing to, you know, compromise a, 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 to a point. Um, but I do want to be known for who I am up front. You know what yes. I'm saying? And I think sometimes when you're so young, you don't always let, you don't know who you are all the way. Um, mm -hmm. But now I feel like I'm in a better space. I know who I am and I'm not afraid to say this is, this is, this is me. Um, yeah. And so if you can't deal with me, then, you know, I need to move on and you do too. Um, but I think that's important to be off. Yeah, I think that I think you should be able to hopefully see that in the other person that you're interacting with that they have also been able to sever their ties and move forward. You can tell by the conversation of the question that you pose on people if they are ready to respond in a assertive manner to give some type of texture to uh, growth versus are they stagnant or are they. Um, still in this particular season in their life, then they think they're out of it. And it comes, the answers for me, they come very quickly. When I talk to someone and I hear this, their response to certain things, I'm already in my mind. So they're not where they need to be at yet. And I'm not the one to get them there. They're supposed to be there by the time they get on the phone with me. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That may, that, yeah. that, may sound like, that may sound hard, but I mean, here we are in the yeah. season of going to our next destiny and Right. We're not 35 no more. So I don't have yeah. a lot of time to kind of uh, help someone build when they should have hopefully have healed and built it since they got out of that last situation. Yeah. If they're back in the scene of trying to move forward to the next destiny. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, too, that, you know, what I'm hearing, too, um, even what Dr. Jenkins was saying, that I think you ask more questions because when you start over, starting over, you don't start at scratch anymore. Mm. You start at experience. Mm. Oh, so yeah. with the, you start at experience. So you, like you say, you're not the Dr. Jen Jenkins of old. There's been growth here. So mm. you yeah. are the person that you are because you are living the divine you now, if I may mm -hmm. say that. That's the person you truly was supposed to be, even going through all of the raw material to get to the true you. And the true you, you kind of like and probably love that person. Yeah. And yeah. when you do that, yeah, you ask all, you, mm -hmm. you, you're open. And if there's no uh, feedback or whatever, people are at different places at different times. And it's okay where they are, but you are not there anymore. Yeah. But my whole thing is experience sometimes is the best teacher. And when you see certain things automatically because, you know, you listen more, listen, yeah. learn, then lead. Then, you know, because and, and, and a person that is in that mode of listening, you learn so much. You okay. learn so much because you you can hear what that person is saying because you just wait to hear. And if it's not there, they can't give you something they don't have. That's right. Yeah. It's so it's true that. that. And I can only give you what I have. And if you, if I ask certain questions, they go over your head, you just know, oh, no, they're not there. You don't have to tell them. You can get, make them mad. You just know. And yeah. it was great. Yeah, it was a great time. And, you know, uh, you take care and wish you well and keep on moving. Yeah. Most definitely. Yeah. You know, that made me think of, you know, having peace, you know, mm -hmm. and knowing who you are and where you're at is very important. I won't say other than God, but along with the aspect of knowing who God is in your life, mm -hmm. what else do you contribute to your peace in the midst of your transition? I definitely, you know what, that's that's an easy one, Dr. Wade. Definitely having some good, having those good support around me, 
you know, diet, mm -hmm. exercise, um, taking time to, to, to meditate, to be quiet, to be okay with being alone. Yeah. Uh, That's key. Being then, okay with being alone. Yeah. I, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm okay being alone and, 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 Maybe just sitting down, I might pop some popcorn and, and you know, I'm I'm a dog lover. So, you know, my dog and I just sit there and we watching TV and and, and be okay with the silence. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that definitely is, is and, and, and I believe, you know, God's peace is, is ever flowing. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's, it's amazing when you, you know, and I had to ask God, Lord, you know, I hear a lot of people talk about your peace. I read it in the word. I want to know that I'm experiencing your peace. That's right. And 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 to, to feel his peace, I, I guarantee you, if you ever had it, you'll never want to give it up, right? Right. <laughs> so, you know, I, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Those right people in your life, most definitely. Doing quality things for yourself and then being okay to do it. You know, I would go out to eat or movies by myself and wouldn't even think of second about it and I would tell someone I did I said you went by yourself what's wrong yes, I'm like nothing yes, at all yes. I just wanted to go yes. you mm -hmm. know and and some people think it's strange but it's something also that empowers you to mm -hmm. be okay with where you're at in your journey you know this is you living life not you living life for other people yes exactly yeah that I was could, a that was a lady uh, that I I uh, met um recently um she talked about how uh, during her transitional times that she literally went on cruises by herself. I don't know if I got there yet, but, you know, it's... I will problem. do it. Yeah. yeah. Could you go on a cruise? And you know what? I think I have to mentally it. picture it, but I think I would be okay doing that. I Finding mm -hmm. my way, meeting people. I guess you, you're you not a stranger to people. You can literally meet some new people along the way. And, and you know what? I did this thing by myself. It's not so bad after all. So, yeah. Even though you long to have someone in your life or whatever, because nobody just wants to be by themselves forever. But in mm -hmm. the meantime, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. you might find a surprise when you're by yourself. Yeah, true. That, pers that person Meet them on the you're looking for might disappear when mm -hmm. you're by when you're mm -hmm. by yourself, you know. But I think that when uh, Dr. Jenkins was talking about that peace, once you have that peace, it's a temperature gauge to know when peace is not there. Yes, and those mm. in your life don't, you know, I guess enhance it to a degree to have a companion or somebody there that you can share. If it's not peaceful, then you know that that's, you know, might not be a fit for you, you know, so it gives you, right. lets you know what the balance is. Yeah, yeah. You know what, that faith, that's good because once you have restored your peace, because I can mm -hmm. imagine the peace was kind of disrupted or whatever. Um, we kind of met the other night about disruptive times. It's something about mm -hmm. getting things put back together again and you really enjoy that time and really don't want anybody coming in messing up that space, you know, anymore. Not even you yourself. But sometimes we can, you know, be our own problem. And, you know, we get to that place and no, no, I I I I'd rather not make a comment about that. I'd rather just keep my thoughts. Because <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> that's peace to me, not yeah. even engaging in the conflict, you know. So mm -hmm. exactly. No, definitely. I'd like to see if the audience have any questions for sure. I know we've got some comments being made. Anybody got some questions or thoughts they'd like to verbalize on there? Just cut your mic on and just talk to us very quick. Ask a question or make a comment. We welcome. We thank you for being in the room with us. I want to share some of that knowledge and, and get some information sent back to you. Anyone want to share? Well, I, I, I would like to say something, Marcus. Um, you know, we was talking briefly about loneliness and being alone. That's two different situations. Uh -huh. and, and, I, and I think we have to define that in the sense of to be alone is not loneliness. Mm. Because, you know, people that loneliness itself is a disease when you feel like you don't have anybody. But when you at a point in your life when you need anything outside of yourself, 
then you're not true to thyself to know it's all within. And once you spend those times and moments of silence and alignment with God, you will realize I got everything I need here. I can go anywhere. But if it's just me, I'm not alone because I know who I am in God. And so I don't, I, you don't experience all of that. So you got to get that together in alignment and know that you co-create with God. So where are we going? God, let's go do this today. What are we going to do today? Yada, yada. The alignment is there. So you never, and I think a lot of that is, <clears throat> excuse me, is getting into the spiritual man and putting the egoic man under submission. Mm. And when I say that, meaning the egoic man will keep you small. Mm. But the higher dimension of yourself will make you larger to yourself. Mm -hmm. To know I don't need anything outside of myself to feel good about who I am. Because I'm a child of God, and God says, you are the most beautiful creature I ever created. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So walk in that, wherever you go. You were saying about the crew? You'd be fine anywhere, Merle. <laughs> 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 I'm just telling you, you're going to be good anywhere you go. Because I'll find some friends. Yeah, yeah. you got the. Uh, you know, we got to understand. I talked in the back about the eye and the lamp of the body. When the mm -hmm. lamp is sound, it it exudes out of you. Mm -hmm. When it exudes out, you attract. Mm -hmm. And we have this thing now. You know, we know what to discern now because we operate in discernment, and we know that discernment is of the spirit, and and the other mm -hmm. is of the head. So we yeah. we can maneuver. That's all I'm saying is we have right. it here. We have it here and now, Marcus, to be the best right. Marcus in the world. Mm -hmm. Because That's it. I'm not I'm not trying to be anything outside of what God say I am. I hope this you is making sense. It is. You know what, Joe, something I thought about, and Dr. Jenkins, you could definitely chime in with this. I thought about, you know, we talk about moving to brighter days ahead. Mm -hmm. You know, Joe mentioned you're dealing with that egoic person. And sometimes yeah. I believe our sensors can become dull when it comes down to, um, you know, dealing with things the way that God tells us to. Because anytime you're in a fight a long time, you get a little dull and you get yes. a little snappy, yeah. a little crazy. That's right. And then the Lord got to, he's got to renew your strength, you know, and, <laughs> yeah. um, you know, one of the things I thought about, and this has just been recently here, I've thought about how I'd love to tell more of my story this time. Yeah. I'd like to share more of my story this time, meaning um, maybe, you know, because a lot of times it, when you're that type of person that can bounce back from things. You know, because I'm kind of like Marcus. I don't like people to see me going through things. By the time you see me, I don't got over it. But I don't want to <laughs> always have to be in that place. I want to be in a position to where uh, my mate can be there through this journey of, of understanding where I've been. I need a covering over me. I don't want to be strong like that anymore because mm -hmm. when it's time to go through things in life, I don't want to feel like I got to go back within and deal with things all by myself. I want to be, be able to know, yes, that the person that I'm with is, that they know me well enough to say, or we know each other well enough to say that we're going to go through this together. This is going to yeah. be our problem together, whether I created it, he created it, it's just something that happened within the dynamics of the of the unit or whatever. But I think I want to be a lot more transparent this time because mm -hmm. I think when you, you are like that, people are more apt to want to come in and, you know, provide a support, even if that support is silence. Because you don't always have to have words for somebody to help somebody to get through something. They learn right. personality style. Yeah. 
and just sit and sit in silence with me, you know, yes, and when we're ready to talk about it, we'll talk about it whenever that time comes, but not having somebody that want to push, you want to talk about it, you know, things like that. No, I, my centers have been strengthened again. I can make it through some things. I just don't want to go through it by myself again. Yeah, have that, you, have yeah. you thought about any of yeah. that, Dr. Yeah, I think that I, I love what you said because I think it's so important when we're so in touch with ourselves. We can we we know what our what our, I'll say what our issues are. You know, <laughs> for me, it's like I I know that I can want to do it myself. You know, oh, you you can't yeah. do it, I do it. <laughs> yeah, that um, and I know that. So so in knowing ourselves, um, I think that that that's the one one of the blessings out of the many um, that 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 God has has allowed to to uh, birth is to be able to be okay with saying, hey, I know that that's not one of my best qualities, so yeah. I, I might need a little help um, not trying to do it all on my own. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, being able to, to have those conversations and somebody say to you, what does that mean? Well, you know, yeah. when when somebody can't do it, I'm the one who can. <laughs> that's right. There's nothing that's going to keep me from it. I'm going to find a way. I'm going to be resourceful. So I need to, you, I don't want to be that person. I think that's so important, Marilyn. I don't want to mm -hmm. be like that. I want some help doing it. Um, and I think that we have to be able to say that because we know ourselves so much better now. Y'all don't know. I am so grateful to know myself so much better. And Joe said, it, you know, maybe about 20 minutes ago, you know, it's, it, you, you, you probably like, the person you are a lot better now. And, and my <laughs> God, I love myself, y'all. Um, mm -hmm. At a time I didn't like myself as much. You know, when you look at yourself, I don't, mm, who, huh? You don't even know, I, we came walk in the closet and decide on what you're going to put on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah, so, just pull that down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that's when you come into your fullness of who you are. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Come into the fullness of who you are. You start liking that new person. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. They yeah. call that 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 full circle, if you will. Yeah, full circle of uh, that holds us as coming to being uh, the person you've always intended to be. You know, even with the flaws included, they call them the character defects and shortcomings. I may still possess them, but they don't possess me anymore. And I like that I'm able to uh, address them differently than I have in the past. You know, and those things are empowering for our going forward. That new destiny, new purpose. You know. Because as we choose mates going forward and we want to grow, I think this is one thing that helps us to uh, speak to them about them also not having to be the total strength of a person. That's you know, right, it's okay Mark. to be okay to be vulnerable. Yeah. 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 Okay. With, without somebody yeah. telling your secrets or whatever. Yeah. 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 I yeah. want to say that when you when um ask this question. When you complete that full circle, is that time when you make room for someone to get into your circle? When you when you when you open up to provide space for someone to share, you know, in your life and and be able to just be able to be inclusive, you know, what's going on in, you know, in your life. So is that that 360 degree circle when that's when you feel safe about that? Is that when you open up to allow those to come in? And that could be in any relationship, I think, you know. I, I think so as well. I feel about that, but I, just a question I wanted to throw that as far as, the, you know, allowing, making room for somebody. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I, the, my, I think I see it from the perspective of is that you know, it's that time to let someone in. Um, but before you come in, I need you to know I'm not giving up anything this time. Yeah. There's a place of compromise <laughs> um, for us to come to. But I, I'm, I am who I am. I'm, I am who God created me to be. And I want to be that person. And I want to want to share this this person with you. I want you to have the best of me, mm -hmm. but I also want the best of you. Um, and I think when we can come to that place, we definitely can can uh, invite someone in. And every day is going to be a struggle, y'all. We don't we don't stay there. You know what I mean? Yeah. I still got my highs and my lows. Don't say that. Um, but I definitely <laughs> fight to get 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 beyond where I was the day before, the year before. Um, someone asked me the other day about uh, losing my daughter, and I said, you know, one thing about it is I didn't want to be last year. I don't want to be where I was last year. This year, mm -hmm. I want to keep moving forward. 
Um, because if I don't, then then I, I become stagnant and I and I'm I'm stuck in a place that that is there I'm not growing in. Um, so I think we just need to know that we need to always be growing and, and be okay with those highs and those lows. Um, but we need those supports so I can call somebody and say, hey, a big sis, I'm 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 struggling. <laughs> uh, you know what? I need you to pray for me. I, I I'll have another prayer partner, I'll call her up, uh, Minister Waddell, God, you know, pray for me. I mean, it could be anything. It could be as simple as my son is in Brazil right now. I can't see him. That's thousands of miles away. It, 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 it's messing with my peace. Yeah. Um, so, you know, um, we, we just, we have to be um, so available to each other. And and uh, one of the things I'll say to, to, to women is, is, it's so important for us to get to know each other and love each other and have conversation with each other. Um, nothing is, to me, is more 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 disheartening when I'm um, I'm working out and I I look at a woman I want to meet her in her eyes and say hello and she look off <laughs> yeah because <laughs> whatever the reason is I don't know what she's going through I really don't but I want to help her I want to be able to you know hey you know one one hello may change something um, so yes. I think we just need to be able to be available to each other as women I'm sure you know men too um, but I think that that's so very important because we all need each other that is. God's intention, um, that we would not be alone, that we would not forsake fellowship. So I think it's important to, to, to say hello, to, to offer yourself to someone else, to be available. Um, I'm grateful for the phone calls from, from families that got some cousins that close to me. Hey, how you doing? And <laughs> I, I love yeah. that. I love that somebody yeah. even called me, enough of me to call me and ask me, how am I doing? Um, and um, they know that it's a process, whatever yeah. you're going right. So yeah. Yeah. Dr. Jenkins, I think um, I think that being available, being more available, is a sign of healing. That's right. Yeah. I agree. I agree. Man. I, Whereas I, before we were always, I'm busy. I'm tied up. I got this. But being, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But being more available yeah. is a sign of healing. Yeah. I'm not okay. as tightened up as I was before. Yeah. yeah. I, I think Especially with that world. We, Go ahead, go ahead, Dr. Way. No, I should say the short statement, especially when we find the right complement to who we are. Mm -hmm. I'm, 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 I'm going to be available. Yes. Mm -hmm. I, I think a lot of that has to do with surrender to the true person that you are. And that's getting the egoic person out of the way because that's always fights any change and once you surrender you realize that you become bigger you become this god-like person that is open i think a lot of it is removing the fears in front of our hearts and replacing it with love and we walk in that and allow god to feel those places in our heart and then from that space of love that God talks about and we become that we live from that space of love yeah and and you don't you you, you it's like you were saying you you are more open yeah you open to the thing that when you and I all of us in this setting are, are in oneness with God it's no place Merlin in and Joe begin we all one mm -hmm. yeah we all oneness with God, and that's where that love is going to happen between all of us, Marcus, because we know what that feel like. We know what that is. It's what God would want of all of us, like you were saying, Dr. Jenkins, is that we're all in that space, moving. Wherever your feet land, God just showed up. Any of us. And we all go different directions, but we're in oneness with God. And that is a beautiful place. That's where we got peace that surpasses our understanding, and we walk in joy. Yeah, I love we walk in that. Beautiful, beautiful place. To close up. Huh? Hello? Yes. Hey, uh, well, uh, thank you, Mr. Joe. Uh, does anybody have any comments? We'd love to hear from our audience tonight. If yeah. you guys would like to open up your mic, 
before we get ready to close out today. We have definitely enjoyed uh, hearing a little snippet from Dr. Jenkins as hey, she yeah. continues even with her process and uh, moving to brighter days ahead. But we'd love to hear from you guys if you want to open up your mic and share for, for a moment. Anybody? Okay, Mr. Desmond, yes. Hello. Hey, Dad. Yes. Hey, I'm sorry. I'm going to cover from neck surgery. Um, so I'm going to try to keep it brief. I'm not supposed to talk for long. Um, like I said, I hear what everybody's saying, and, you know, everybody has a lot of good points. But like I said, I'm, I'm probably the baby in the room anyway, you know, being at 35. And, you know, going through a divorce, but I've learned one thing, you know, I guess because I'm a, I'm a teacher as well. And, you know, with, you know, looking forward to my next relationship or however it goes, I, you know, I guess I, I stopped looking for, you know, perfection and I start realizing that I'm not the definition of perfection. And I realized, you know, there's a lot of things that have happened and, you know, caused a lot of conflicts between me and whoever, you know, you want to be perfect for that person. You want to be the end all to be all for your significant other. And then when you know when it falls apart, you know, that despair, you know, understanding, feeling like you aren't the problem. You are the problem. You are this. You are that. And I could sit there and say that, you know, I know that, you know, those days crying even before I thought about however it is, you know, hey, I cried about it. Yeah. And that's a hard thing to do. You know, therapy works. All these things, they work, they help. But, you know, in all this, you know, this time, these three years have passed, I think the thing I learned the most is that I do deserve to be happy. Mm -hmm. And whoever I decide to be with, I'm not worried about where you are, you know, mentally and this and that. I'm a teacher. As long as you want to learn, that's all that matters to me. I'm not looking at your status, what you have, this and that, you know. It wasn't. It shouldn't be about that. It should be about the characteristic of the person that you are and I am. We're not supposed, we're not going to always be compatible. You know, I've learned one thing, like, hey, I'm in this mode. I don't do the, you know, the honeymoon phase where, you know, hey, this, no, 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 I, this is who I am from day one to day end. You know, either you're going to deal with it or you're not. And, you know, the one thing I say now, you know, when it comes to, like, hey, my grandma told me something when, you know, because she was married to my granddad for almost, before she passed almost 50 some years. And the thing that got me, and I asked her why y'all relationship last so long. And she said the one thing, she like, I pursue him. Mm. We pursue each other. And I said, I, as I got old, now I'm older, like I understand that, like, hey, I see, I, I love you. I this and that. It's like those little things that we do. Like mm -hmm. those little can fix this like hey just tell me how you feel just tell me this here and there it's those little bitty things and I think that's what people fail to realize why a lot of the you know our problems you know marriages fail and stuff like that because we forget the little things we think the big things are the most important things but the little things are the things that we actually do to notice who we are I know that this about you I this and that and then we fail to communicate with each other we give up we stop talking Everything can be talked through. Everything can be worked through if that's what we truly desire. I'm still learning. I'm still growing. But the one thing I realized that I'm always going to have a teacher and student mindset when it comes to whoever I'm with. You know, this is why I'm at. Cool. You might, you ain't got to be there. But if you're willing to grow with me, let's grow together. If you're willing to create, let's create together. But this is something that we got to work on. We both got to work on it. And I'm learning that now. That's something that I missed in my marriage is that there was no growth. There was no communication. All these negativities that came into play. You know, I'm sitting here crying. I, I'm happy. I'm happy as I ever that I as I ever ever has been. And I'm continue to going on because I've learned this. In order to be with somebody, you have to be a student, and you have to be the teacher. You have to, have, and both of y'all have to fill that role in and out, but you have to pursue each other too. And if, you know, like I asked them, you know, if you with somebody, and, you know, I have people, females that's like, okay, well, would you do these things for me? I'm like, you know, you can ask me whatever you want. You can ask me to be whatever you want me to be, 
the question is, will you be the would you be the counter? Would you match me? If you're not willing to be what you want me to be, then you can't ask me to be what you want me to be. I love it. That's it. So, like I said, I learned from my grandma now. Like, hey, you know, as long as we love each other, chase each other, like we both get the we, we both match each other energy, things can get better. You gotta be a student and you have to be a teacher at the same time. You know, you know, he had to look at people for who they are, not what they have, but actually who they are and where they can go. Because we don't, we never know what somebody can be. You know, we might be that stepping stone for them to be the best version of themselves. And, you know, as they're yeah. growing, we're learning too. So the whole, you know, that's one thing I've learned that I wish I could have did better in my marriage is that we could have learned to be better. We could have learned to feed off each other. We could have learned these things. But alas, we did. And I understand it now, so I know going forward, it's about communication. You know, as a man, we don't talk about our feelings. We hide our feelings. We suppress our mm-hmm. feelings. And that becomes a problem. Me, I think I got an issue now. I don't have no problem sharing it. I'm like, look, I, this is how I feel. Cool. If you ain't like it, you talking, know. Talking a lot now. <laughs> don't bother me. Like, But I don't want no issues. You know, I don't want no problem. You need to know what we both need to know what's going on. So if I'm if we got a healthy communication channel, it helps. Because now I understand right. what you got going on. You understand what I got going on. Oh, now we both can work. If we really care, we can make solutions instead of just everybody just trying to, you know, I don't have ESPN like that. I can't read people's minds, but yeah. I can read pe- I can read people's words. I listen with my eyes. And that's how I better myself. You know, we still learning and we growing. And that's it. I'm a teacher and a student. So whoever we, we got to be teaching, we're we going to swap roles. I just understand that you got to be flexible. Yes. And you know what? That sounds like we're growing. It looks like Black Love for Singles is working, y'all. <laughs> right. Yeah. We are growing up and learning some things, and I think this community has helped us a whole lot. Cause I don't think I could have done it. I, I don't think I could have done it without y'all. When I tell you, I'm so I was so glad to be able to tuck up under a place and get with some people that got their own struggles going on. And and if I can't talk to it about talk to it with anybody on the outside, I got a group of people in here that we right can talk here. about and grow with it. So, Dr. Wade, do you have any final things? And then we'll let Dr. Uh, Dr. Nisa have those final words. We're gonna close out because y'all, she's on that Easter stand of time, and I know she's ready. No, she's for ready. Pain, 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 over there. <laughs> I just want to say I just appreciate our time tonight and the information she shared with us and hope we can continue to build ourselves up to become the, the next level that we need to be at. You know, so I appreciate your time and hopefully you'll come back and join us again. Thank you so much. Thank you all so much. It was my pleasure to be with you all this evening. And uh, thank you for being here. As I said, when I started earlier, you know, don't be afraid to find some support. And the other thing about finding support is, you know, find some support that don't look so much like you, you know. Yeah. Oh. They, 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 they might know a little bit more than you. They may have been a little bit, you know, yeah, that's cool. places, a little bit more exposure. That's a good thing um, because their experience is not the same as yours. And I think that's just so important to to, to be able to uh, have someone around you that you can trust um, and, and yes. ask God to guide you in, in selecting those people or bringing those people to you. It's important. Mm-hmm. Thank you all so much. Thank Thanks, you. Marilyn. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Well, we want to say thank you to everyone for joining in with us tonight. Y'all, we want y'all to come back in because we got a flip side of this story. On the other side, uh, we have Mr. and Mrs. William Fields that's going to be coming in next Thursday. And they're going to talk about love at first sight. How did that happen? (laughs) Life after divorce. They're going to come back again and talk about making peace with their past. But they're going to tell us how they got to that journey. So don't forget us next Thursday night. Join back in. Be sure to invite others in with us as well. And uh, I'm going to ask our brother, uh, Dr. Wade, to close us out in prayer. And then we're going to dismiss on tonight. All right. Grace, Father, we just thank you and praise you for your mercy and your grace. Thank you for just being in the room. Thank you for giving inspiration and guidance and even direction in this place that we're in. Lord God, continue to just encourage our hearts, Lord, to pursue you first, Lord God, and allow our, 
eyes and see that you're going to give us all the things that we desire because we seek ye first. We thank you for forgiveness of sins, Lord God. We thank you for repentance in our hearts, Lord God. Restore us to right standing this day, this hour. In Jesus' name, we thank you as we go forward tonight, Lord God. Give us peaceful sleep, Lord God, and rest and give us dreams, Lord God, and visions. In Jesus' name, we thank you for all things. Amen. Amen. You guys have a wonderful night. We'll see you next Thursday. Right. Bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Thank you so much. Good night.